Hello, this is the Trade Site Forex Market Preview and International Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Sunday, the 25th of January 2015 and ending Friday the 30th as we wrap up already the first month of 2015. It's been a strong month for the dollar index, especially after the uh, announcement of Switzerland just over a week ago. Dollar picked up a little speed late in this week. And headed higher against a lot of pairs, although some of the pairs were very flat each session. It was kind of a mishmash of what pair was moving and what pair was sitting still at any given time. Kind of an awkward week for us in Forex compared to the last several weeks that we've had. But at any rate, uh, we'll take a look at the intraweek action in a moment. Here's a look at the Euro dollar. And uh, you can see the daily chart here. Here's a look at the pound dollar. And this one's got a 13 buy signal a couple weeks ago that has now broken the risk level for that buy signal. So that's actually a sign of further weakness on the pound. Here's a look at the Aussie, also breaking down strength in the dollar type of situation. And the New Zealand dollar, same thing finally. So uh, all the major pairs breaking in favor of the dollar after a big run that it's already had over the last five or six months. Here's something that's a cross pair, the pound yen, which had a, basically topped that up by that 13 Comer uh, seeker sell signal a couple of uh, about a month and a half ago at the beginning of December and has been rolling over ever since. So that red line should be the target. That's the static trend line of that move. All right, let's look at the intra week action. See what we saw this week in 30 minute bars. Keep in mind, Monday was uh, a U.S. bank holiday. So we line up all the way back to last Friday. Monday was very, very flat because of the bank holiday. Tuesday was also very flat on the euro, as was really Wednesday. It was Thursday where things started moving. Uh, into the U.S. session, things tanked on the euro dollar and then fell even further on Friday. What's amazing is after having basically a 100 pip range for the first three days of the week, including the Monday holiday, we end up trading over 500 pips on the euro dollar out of the blue in two days. That's a little surprising, but that's that dollar index taking off. Here's a look at the, uh, the pound dollar, however, which was a little different. Doesn't look the same at all, does it? Monday was fairly flat. Tuesday, a little wider, but not much. Wednesday, fairly flat. Thursday, it did head down. And then Friday, uh, a flat, fairly flat total range here is only about 250 pips, which is, I would say, just under average for a week on the pound. So the euro really saw some movement on the last two days. The pound did it, but the first half of the week was very flat and choppy. Didn't give you a lot of opportunities. Uh, in general, here's a look at the Aussie dollar uh, intraweek, more of a steady decline, and the New Zealand dollar, uh, same thing as well. All right, let's take a look at the economic data coming out this week, start to get an idea of what to look for. So Sunday is an Australian bank holiday, and then we've got Japan's trade balance. We've got the uh, Greek elections, uh, credit card spending out of New Zealand. Monday's a light day for data, nothing in the U.S. We've got the German business climate, BBA mortgage approvals out of the U.K., Euro group meetings out of Europe, SPPI out of Japan that night, business confidence out of Australia as they start their week, and CB leading index out of China. Going into Tuesday, we've got the preliminary GDP uh, in the UK. We've got uh, durable goods here in the US, and then the S&P HPI number, that's the housing price index, flash services, PMI, consumer confidence at 10 a.m. Eastern time, along with new home sales and the Richmond Manufacturing Index. Australia's MI leading index is Tuesday night along with their CPI. Ooh, and look at this, something I've not seen before, the trimmed mean CPI out of Australia. I'm not sure what that is. UBS consumption indicator out of Switzerland going into Wednesday, German import prices and consumer climate and 30-year bond auction. Jump to the U.S. at 10.30 a.m. where we've got the weekly crude oil inventories. We also have a Fed announcement, so that's a two-day Fed meeting, a Tuesday-Wednesday meeting here in the U.S. Uh, for the Fed on Wednesday. Uh, also, the Bank of New Zealand, an hour later, reports their uh, rate announcement, and then they announced their trade balance number. Uh, Australia's CB leading index that night, Japan's retail sales, Australia's import uh, prices, and uh, then we've got the uh, GBP, that's the UK's nationwide HPI, uh, Europe's uh, German preliminary CPI data. It's coming out at some point that day on Thursday. German unemployment change. M3 money supply out of Europe, private loans out of Europe, Italian 10-year bond auction. UK has got their CB realized sales. And then Thursday morning here in the US, US we have the weekly unemployment claims data, uh, pending home sales, which is a monthly number. Uh, we've got Natty Gas and Building Consents, along with uh, visitor arrivals out of New Zealand. Uh, Japan's got the housing spe household spending number, along with the Tokyo 
core CPI and the national Japanese CPI and unemployment rate all at once at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday, and then their preliminary industrial production. We've got consumer confidence out of the U.K. Australia's got their PPI. Uh, we've got housing starts out of Japan jumping to Friday at noon. No data here in the U.S. Friday. Uh, German retail sales, French consumer spending. We've got the uh, KOF economic barometer out of Switzerland. I apologize. There, yeah, that was Thursday. No, there's no data. There is data Thursday. We've already covered. There's still data to come Friday here in the U.S. That's this is the uh, East European time. Uh, Italian monthly unemployment rate. UK's got their net lending to individuals, M4 money supply and mortgage approvals. Europe's CPI flash estimate and unemployment rate both at once at 5 a.m. Eastern time on Friday. And then Canada's GDP. And here's an important one. This is the U.S. This is the advanced GDP. This is a once a quarter, first uh, month of the quarter, looking back at Q4. This is the first look at GDP. So that's a big number, one of our big three. Not really because it doesn't come out every month. But it is on the level of that because it's such an important number. So you got a Fed meeting this week on with an announcement Wednesday, and you've got the first look at GDP for Q4 on Friday. Both nights will be half size ahead of. We've also got the employment cost index coming out at the same time. Then the Chicago PMI, University of Michigan sentiment, and then later on Saturday, manufacturing PMI out of China. So a lot of data coming out, more stacked to the back end of the week. Like I said, we'll have to be half size ahead of the Fed, half size ahead of that GDP number. We will be calling it in the lab as usual to help you make money in the Forex markets. Charts brought to you by eSignal12. If you have not taken a free trial of our services, you can do so. And if you find these videos useful, please like us on YouTube. It does help us out. Have a great week and weekend.